everyone welcome back to my channel and thank you guys so much for joining me for today's video as you guys can tell this is definitely a bonus video because i don't normally upload on sunday but i really wanted to share this video with you guys i've had a lot of requests for more of my Mexican cooking recipes. So I thought that today was the perfect day to share those with you. I'm actually getting ready to celebrate Day of the Dead with my family. And I did this video last year on a much smaller scale, but I really just wanted to share the tradition with you guys and show you everything that goes into this really special day. So I'm just starting off by making the Day of the Dead bread a day before because it does definitely take a while to make i will go ahead and leave the recipe down in the description box for you guys but just know that each step you have to let your dough sit for about an hour so once everything is mixed up you are going to let it sit for an hour and then after this particular step right here which is where i'm forming my actual bread you're also going to let it sit for an hour before you put it in the oven again i will also link last year's video Video because I went much more into detail about how I make this bread but this is a super traditional bread for day of the dead so I knew I could not not make it for this day Okay, now moving on to the actual Day of the Dead altar. I am just placing this plastic cover over my entryway table. And you guys, there is so much that goes into making one of these altars and such a huge belief that your loved ones come back and visit you during the following days. But the only way they can is if you have their picture up on an altar. So I just want to go ahead and put a disclaimer out there and say this is definitely not a way of worshiping the dead if that is what you are thinking. This is just a beautiful way of remembering and honoring those loved ones who have passed away. In my case, as many of you guys know, my dad has passed away. My mom's husband passed away this year earlier in February. And both my grandma and my grandpa on my mom's side have also passed away. When I was smaller, we used to do this altar for my grandpa and one of my mom's brothers. So this is just something that I grew up doing. My parents actually did not let us celebrate Halloween. So on the day of Halloween we would stay home watch all the trick-or-treaters go by but my mom would make us some empanadas and we would decorate an altar for my grandpa and her brother like I said and it is just something that stuck with me and I thought was so beautiful so here I am just putting these picture frames up with a picture of each one of them I painted these frames myself as well as these little skulls I got from Michael's and I think there's a lot of different ways you can make an altar, including colors. I choose to make mine very colorful because my dad was actually colorblind in life. And I like to think that now that he is in heaven, he gets to enjoy all of the beautiful colors. So that is why I choose to make mine very colorful. It is just a belief I have and I hope that in heaven he enjoys seeing all the beautiful colors he didn't when he was on earth so I'm just gonna go ahead and decorate it with some flowers. I will also be placing different items on the actual altar. Some important ones include the white pillar candles you guys just saw me put. You do light one for each person who has passed away so it aids in their return home. And then these flowers right here are called Sempasu. I can't pronounce it, Sempa Sushiles, and they are actually traditional for Day of the Dead. They have a really strong odor and it is believed to help guide them back to Earth. 
and then I'm also placing some fruit, a glass of water, and I'm gonna place some of my dad's favorite things, including tequila. I also place some soda, some cigarettes, his favorite candy. Here I am placing these fishing hooks for my mom's husband since he loved fishing and yeah i just basically filled it up with different items and later on when my mom and my siblings get here they will also add on to this so this is how it turned out and again i just think it is such a beautiful tradition Okay friends, and now moving on to making the actual dinner. This was actually one of my dad's favorite dinners that I made. I actually made this for him on his last birthday that I got to celebrate with him. So you basically start off with some dried red chili. You can find this at Walmart. And then you take off the little top end of it and shake out all the seeds into your trash can. Place it back in your pot, fill it up with water, and then you're going to add all the ingredients which I will have listed down below in the description box for you guys. But it's basically salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic, oregano, chicken, bouillon, and some brown sugar. So I will leave the measurements down in the description box for you guys. But once everything is in here, you're going to put this on your stove and just let it boil usually around 15 to 20 minutes. Then I went up ahead and cut up some potatoes. I just peeled and diced them. And then I'm just using this meat for my chile colorado, which is called carne picada. And you can find it at Walmart, like I said. I'm just going to add all of this to my pan with some oil and again adding some pepper, some salt, some onion powder, and some bay leaves. And then I'm just going to let this cook on medium heat with the lid over it. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do while my chili actually finishes boiling. And then we'll move on to my lazy rice that I make. Okay friends, so like I said, this is my lazy rice that I make. I just used the 5 minute white rice and I made 3 cups on this particular day. Just followed the instructions on the box and then I am adding some corn and some sour cream to this as well as some salt and pepper and just mixing this all up and that is it for this rice. This is definitely not the traditional way to make it but I sometimes have to cut some corners to save time and this is just as good in my opinion so definitely my lazy rice but super super yummy Okay, so now moving back to the red chili, you can definitely benefit from a larger blender, but I don't have one. I actually just have this little personal one because usually I'm only making enough for Jonathan and I. So I had to do this about three times, but basically you are just going to fill up your blender with your chilies and then you're going to add some of that same water that it cooked in you're going to blend this all up as much as you can blend it before putting it through a strainer into your pot so that is exactly what i'm doing here just be careful because if your chili is still really really hot and your hand is on it you can actually burn yourself so just be careful i use a paper towel as a barrier but yeah, just be mindful of that. Like I said, you're just going to run this through a strainer and into your pot. And once all of this is ready, you're going to know because your strainer is going to be full of like all the seeds and the skin off of the chiles. So yeah, I'm just moving it around and straining it. And yeah, once that is done, then I'll go ahead and add my meat and potatoes to it and let it cook for another good 20 minutes on medium heat. And yeah, that is basically it for the chile colorado.
Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to making our beans. These are called frijoles puercos and my mother-in-law is actually the one who taught me how to make these. My dad went over for Christmas one year and he absolutely loved them. So I had to learn to make them for his birthday. And all you need is some butter and then this is some pork chorizo. You can find all of the things I'm using today at Walmart and I will try to have them linked for you guys but I'm just adding that into the pan and then I'm just gonna cook it make sure it's all really good mushed up before I actually add my beans to it I'm using just normal pinto beans that I cooked in our pressure cooker and then I'm gonna let that come to a boil before taking a masher and just mashing it all up as good as you can you can actually also throw this into a blender and just blend it all up but like i said i don't have a big enough blender so i just use a masher and try my best at it but the best consistency is if you put it into a blender and just blend it all up but anyways that is going to be the last thing i am making for dinner it is definitely a labor of love and like i said i chose to make this because it is one of the last dinners that i made for my dad and it's just something that really connects me to him and makes me remember him and yeah i don't want to get super sentimental but this is how everything came out and oh my god it was so absolutely yummy but by now my family is actually starting to arrive so my mom and my brother were here and here is my mom just adding some of the things that she wanted to add to the altar which traditionally it is just things that remind you of them or that you know that they enjoy so i will show you guys in a bit the things that she added but my brother also added some things and my oldest sister as well so again it is just such a beautiful way to celebrate your loved one's life and their departure as well and although it might not be true that they come back to earth and so on it is still such a beautiful way to cope with grieving so here my mom added a snickers this cute little car since he collected cars she also added some cigarettes for my dad like I said, we added some Cokes because they all enjoyed it. And then she added some peanuts for my grandparents. She said both of them really enjoyed it as well as this coffee. And yeah, again, like I said, it's just so beautiful. And I really, really enjoy keeping this tradition alive. And I cannot wait until the day I'm building this altar with my kids as my mom did with me. And I can tell them stories of my grandparents, my 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 dad their grandpa and my mom's husband so just so special but everyone was hungry so here we are just eating and yeah Like I said, I really just wanted to show you guys what our tradition looks like. So after we had dinner, we all gathered around on our couch and we had a prayer session for specifically my dad. We did do this on the 28th, which is traditionally the first day of Day of the Dead. You start putting your altar up, you light a candle for them. But it also so happens to be the monthly anniversary since my dad's passing and we do always get together on every single 28th to pray. So that is what we were doing but of course we also threw in a prayer for all of our loved ones who have passed away. After we were done praying, we then moved on to having some dessert. So I'm just going to go ahead and serve everyone some Day of the Dead bread. We made some coffee and then we just sat around and talked and just kind of had a moment of remembrance talking about our loved ones and memories that we have with them. We laughed, we cried, a little bit of everything. But again, just so beautiful to get to have this day with my family. But that is everything for this video friends i hope you guys enjoyed coming along on this day with all the baking and the cooking but also i hope this 
just gave you some insight into a very beautiful tradition that I have that my family has and yeah I just really hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below in the comments what you think and again just try to be nice I know that not a lot of people think that this tradition is beautiful but it is for us so as always if you enjoy this please give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next one bye